Good morning. A very happy Easter to you. The idea of all the churches being closed on Easter Sunday would have been unthinkable a few months ago, but this seems to have become the new normal. The first Easter, of course, didn't take place in a church, but in a garden, so maybe it's very appropriate for me to be talking to you here from the garden of East Hook Farm. We're going to begin with a special prayer for Easter Sunday, the Easter Collect. So let us pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Now we're going to hear the Easter Gospel read to us by one of the readers in the team, Beverly Johnson. The pictures you will see are from the churchyard of All Saints at Campton, where normally this morning we would hold an open air service followed by breakfast, having visited the tomb set up under the church. Hear the Gospel according to St John. Chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. The Empty Tomb. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they've put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. There's a moment of wonderful drama in the Easter story. The tomb has been found empty. Mary has gone in distress to find the disciples to tell them that the body of Jesus has been taken. Peter and John have run to the tomb and seen the grave clothes lying around as if someone had just shrugged them off. Then they've gone away, leaving a crying Mary to have an encounter with someone she assumes must be the gardener. He asks her why she is crying and she tells him they've taken Jesus away. And he says to her, Mary. And that single word cuts through the fog of grief and doubt and despair 
and she sees that the man in front of her is not the gardener, but Jesus himself. Those of us who are old enough all remember where we were when we heard those crackly words from the moon, one small step for man. Those words were a milestone in human history, but nowhere near as important as that one word, Mary. The first word spoken from beyond the grave. The first word uttered by the risen Lord Jesus. The name of someone who loved him. It's easy to understand why Mary was crying. It's amazing that she was able to function at all. It's hard enough to lose someone you love, but to see them brutally and cruelly murdered must have been almost unbearable. The man she thought was indestructible had been broken and killed. Her enemies had triumphed. The whole world had turned black. And then that one word, Mary. Picture yourself outside that tomb, early morning, bewildered, disorientated, exhausted, frightened. And then that voice speaking your name. Death can be so cruel, so final, so black. And into that dark place where Mary found herself, a bright light shone. I've been doing quite a bit of phoning around the last couple of weeks and I have to say most people I speak to seem to be remarkably cheerful. I suppose it must be that if we, as weeks turn into months it will get harder but I'm impressed by the resilience. Maybe like me you are finding that your spirits go up and down and that when someone calls you put, tend to put on your bright voice. Hello, how are you? Yes, I'm fine. The word unprecedented has been used a lot. I think it's a bit of a silly word because every time is unprecedented. It's the nature of time, it never repeats itself. But these are certainly hard times. And for many people, they are exceptionally hard times. Times when all our easy assumptions about the future are being challenged. And on Easter Sunday, the risen Lord Jesus speaks into that uncertainty and fear. Not with some grand theological statement, but with one word, our name. Maybe this Easter Sunday you feel like you're standing outside that empty tomb, not knowing what to believe. And let's face it, it is a big thing we're being asked to believe, that someone could die and rise again. If it were a commonplace thing, then it wouldn't have changed the world. But this is a big thing, a hard thing. But instead of going away like the disciples, if we stick around like Mary, then we can expect our name to be called. Mary, said Jesus. Teacher, said Mary. And the world changed forever as the first encounter of a close kind took place between a human being and the risen Lord Jesus. Stick around. Wait for him to call you and let your fear and sadness be turned to courage and hope. So now, a modern Easter hymn written by Stuart Townend.
Let us pray. Lord, for church buildings we love are locked, but let our hearts be open to your presence. In our hearts, let us make your Easter garden, plant it with flowers, and let the heavy stone be rolled away. So in joy and hope, let us pray to the Father that our risen Saviour may fill us all with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that isolated or dispirited or persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That those around the world who lack food, work or shelter and are caught up in war and famine will be sustained through the compassion that flows from your risen power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that you will be close to all living with COVID-19, for those caring for them and for all who are anxious or worried about loved ones or loss of income. We pray for the health and well-being of our nation, for Elizabeth, our Queen, our government and their scientific advisers, for NHS staff and all doctors and nurses. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, reveal the light of your presence to the sick, the weak and the dying. Comfort and strengthen them. In your mercy we remember those who have died in recent days and all whom we love but see no longer. May they rest forever in the light and peace of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for ourselves that we may be a resurrection people, bearing faithful witness to our Lord and walking in his way, even in these challenging times, without fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as his death has recalled us to life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And finally, a Celtic blessing. Circle us, risen Lord. Keep protection near and danger afar. Circle us, risen Lord. Keep hope within. Keep fear without. Circle us, risen Lord. Keep light near and darkness afar. Circle us, risen Lord. Keep peace within. Keep evil out. One of the deep sadnesses about this extraordinary Easter is that we are unable to celebrate communion together. Instead, I'm going to invite you to do something else. Traditionally, Christians have been baptised at Easter or renewed their baptism vows. And I'm going to give you the opportunity to do that now. It may feel a little strange talking to a screen. But try it, even if it's under your breath. In baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. Therefore, I ask, do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I turn to Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit to Christ. Do you come to Christ, the way, the truth and the life? I come to Christ. May God, who has received you by baptism into his church, pour upon you the riches of his glory. That within the company of Christ's pilgrim people, you may be daily renewed by his anointing spirit and come to the inheritance of his saints in glory. Amen. That may be the first time you have done that for a long time. And if it is, pause the video for a moment and thank God for hearing your prayer. Well, no Easter service would be complete without the most famous of all the hymns, 
thine be the glory. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to death on the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.